Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Livestream. Today, we're going to be talking about do you participate in live streams? I want to really talk about and dig deep, well, as deep as you want to take it, but I really do want to talk to with you guys today about what it really means to participate in a live stream today. So we've got some different aspects of uh, maybe some of the questions. You're going to see some of the questions come out with uh, with creator hashtag. You're going to see it come out with an audience hashtag. Just because I want to put some of these questions, questions you're going to see context. some of the, Because I think we take it for granted. But first, before we actually really get it all into that, um, I really do want to, we need to go over the rules. Because there are rules and there's rules to having fun. So why don't we get right into those? There are four basic rules when doing our Twitter chat. The first, because it is a Twitter chat primarily that we live stream, look, we need to use the hashtag let's live stream for every tweet. And I kind of joke, but you know what? I've gotten really, I've really gotten to think about this. Let's just use let's live stream hashtag for everything we do. No, I'm just kidding. Just for the Twitter chat, just use the let's live stream uh, tweet. Uh, every tweet you guys send out uh, for as we do this, uh, uh, the Twitter chat today. The second, because we do uh, questions and answers, make sure you just use A1, A2, A3 for whatever question, all six of them that we're going to be doing today. Um, and as I mentioned, it is a Twitter chat as well as a live stream. So you guys can actually watch us live on Periscope. Um, and I'm going to be pinning that right up in our, uh, to our Periscope, I mean, to our Twitter page, the Periscope, or you, if you want to, you can go over to, um, livetalknation.com and that will take you over to our Facebook group and you can watch us live on Facebook. So whichever way works for you, this gives you a chance really just to participate. Uh, you can tweet, you can follow along in the Facebook comments or on YouTube or wherever, but if you would just take a moment right now and would you share this show out? Because actually I think, I think that's what I need to do. I think I need to do this, share the show out. So let me just pull this right up. There we go looking out and now I see the periscope. Let me see if I can't pull this out. All right, so one of the things that I, because we're talking about engagement and participation, one of the things that I'm gonna talk about this, uh, but I'm probably about two, three times in the, during the show today, I would like each one of you guys, if you have not already, know that uh, during the show, if you reply, I'm gonna send out a tweet but get ready with your show links. Because when you guys uh, reply to that tweet with your show link, I'm gonna give it a retweet, um, but it's a really cool way to be able to uh, really just connect and see what other content you guys are creating. It doesn't have to be marketing, it doesn't have to be business or social or anything else. It could actually just be you hanging out. It could just be you maybe sharing something that's important to you. And if it is educational or if it is more informational, feel free. I want you guys to be able to share it because this is really about community and maybe just showing us different ways that you participate in the conversation. So without much further ado, I know we also do have a guest and she is, she's actually kind of, she's, she's strolling in the room as it were virtually, but today we actually do have Rachel Moore. She's going to be a guest on today's episode. And I want to make sure that she is tagged in a ton of stuff today um, because we love Rachel and she's so much fun. And we're really, I'm really happy that she's going to be on the show today. So Having said that, we have to get ready for question number one. I know it's getting ready to go out. We have probably like less than 60 seconds and I still need to do my job of tweeting out the, uh, tweeting out the, the Periscope show. So anyway, having said that, how many of you guys are actually able to join us today live on, and I'm trying to pull up Facebook and it's just being a little slow today. I don't know why. I don't know why. Here we go. Hey, we do. We do have a Rachel. Rachel. Hello. Hello. How show. are you? Thank you. I know it's so nice to be back with you guys. And uh, God, you guys just really, I, I'm looking at the broadcast. Uh, it's awesome. You guys are amazing. Isn't this fun? You are. Yes, it is fun. And you're amazing. I don't know why Facebook's slow on you either. I mean, maybe it hasn't had coffee today. I only had one cup oh, myself. Yeah, tell so me about it. It's hard to believe. I know. It's hard to believe. Not you though. You're a coffee drinker. I am a I am a coffee consumer. I think I, we're just going to straight out call it. I mean, I, I, you shower in it. I think. I think you pretty much shower in coffee. I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> you shouldn't. You should just. No. 
I'm actually trying to pull up the Periscope too, so I can share it out and be like, look at the Periscope. It's amazing. Cool. Yeah, I put it out. So we do have first question up. Do it. I know the first question is live and I want to make sure everybody's got a chance. So first question, um, it really is, it, this is, I mean, I've done this myself. I've, I've given this own, you know, some, a little bit of thought in terms of like, yeah, have I actually done this? What, what do I feel about this? How do I mm -hmm. think about it? And it really is. Do you listen in the background or do you actively participate in the live streams? I'd really like to know both one, Rachel, where you stand with this, but also everybody that's in the comments and stuff like that. I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Well, uh, I know, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to answer this from what I see happening and then what I would do. Uh, and I also pulled up Periscope. So I'm also going to try to, come, cause I love you guys. God, I love, I love the scopers and everybody. Um, I see a ton of people that tend to lurk and, and granted, let's be honest. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you, you do come upon a live stream. It's not like you necessarily, you know, as in the <clears throat> blab days don't necessarily have the opportunity to hop in to the broadcast, but Sometimes the broadcast you do join, they say, hey, does anybody want to come on camera? I tend to see people like to lurk and comment in the background and not necessarily dip their toe in to say, yeah, I'm totally going to come in and um, be part of that. So uh, I think that I'm seeing more lurking, although people love to comment. I, you always know the people who are uh, the regulars that show up and they like to engage with each other and things like that and um and and really uh comment and tag as you'd mentioned and and love getting in there i love the people who and those of you who you know who you are because you do this when someone brings up a a comment or a, a link you guys are right there you're like typing in for the host so they don't even have to do it it's amazing and everybody's like thank you for doing that oh my god because you know that happens um I will echo something Joel Com has said repeatedly, and he used to say it on Blab, is that if you have the opportunity to get on camera with someone, do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you're indecent or, you know, eating a really messy taco, or unless the show is about tacos, you could do that, I guess. But uh, you should take the opportunity to get on. Um, and, you know, sometimes they just want you on for a few minutes. I know from a host standpoint, Jonathan, you could speak to this. It helps the host tremendously when you mm -hmm. just have that other person swoop in, even if they say something crazy or look weird. Uh, it just helps the show a ton. So it's because, um, you know, a lot of the live streams that I think that are, are successful, it really goes on the basis that they, that it, it's personal in, in engagement, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and I, I personally, I'm, I am trying to reprogram myself to get away from the word engagement when I'm talking about when people talk to people. Okay. It's one thing when, you know, when, um, I've clicked on a link because I want to read it, that's engagement. Like I I've gone from being very passive and just coming across it to engaging, taking that next step. But that's not how that's Rachel. When I talk to you, I'm not saying, well, Hey, I'm going to go engage with, uh, with Rachel. No, I'm going to go talk to her. Yeah. I, yeah. When, when we, when we have that person to person, the people, um, you know, that's where we, I, I, maybe we could just use the word participate. And I like that word. Yeah. I, I like that one too. We participate in, in what's going on. I don't engage. Well, and, and you think about it, I always, and I don't know why, and we were just talking about coffee. Maybe this is why, but, uh, I always equate it to like when you're sitting and, you know, you meet a friend for coffee and you, you do see it a ton today. People do meet for coffee or you see families go out and they're together but they're not together because they're all doing this number. And, uh, but when you, when I get, if you and I met up for coffee, if you came to Denver and you said, Rachel, I have an hour between some meetings. Can we grab some coffee? I'd say, yes. So when we go to a coffee shop here in Denver and you and I would be blah, 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 gabbing the entire time. Um, and that is participating in the conversation. So really, I do really like that because you, you do engagement has become such a buzzword. Um, to be, and really it means liking, clicking, sharing. Mm -hmm. when that's not having a conversation and it's totally possible to do that through live streams and in the comments and live streams. I mean, shoot, you could have, you've been solo on these before and you're just seeing people type messages. You're, you're participating with those people. You're, yeah. you read what they say. Oh my gosh, that's such a great point. So, and so, you know, and you say it. And so that's participating in that, in that, um, participation. <laughs> it, it, no, it, no, it, it really, it does. And, and that's where I'm saying, like, we're taking it away from a very metricy, you know, uh, it's a buzzword. Engagement has yeah. become a buzz, buzzword. It used to be a describer. Yes. What, well, what is this thing that people are doing? Well, it's engagement. And well, then we would define it, but we've used it so much 
Mm -hmm. that it's become a buzzword in the industry yeah. and we take it for granted. And that's really kind of why I, I feel that, that we need, it doesn't, obviously it doesn't change the actual, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It just have to, we have to change what we're calling it to actually match now the industry. And I think how people are participating. That's right. So I'm actually, I'm trying, it was something like, it was a ton of people that were, that were sending messages out and I wanted to make sure I'm just watching Scope and Twitter. Are you on Facebook? I, I am a little bit on Facebook, and I'm just trying to catch up with some of the tweets. That I just see a out. really big tacos gif that Alfredo put out on Twitter, which now I really want a taco, a messy no. one. I want a messy <laughs> taco, and it's not Tuesday. It's not Tuesday. No. That it's is no good. That is pretty funny. So, uh, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, just coming down to it, you know, do you listen to – do you listen to uh, broadcast? I'm going to use broadcasts in a very, very broad sense because it's not always informational or educational and, you know, and all the, there's a whole bunch of different kinds, but do you listen in the background or do you, when, when the show comes on or do you really focus in and type and participate and go back and forth? Or is it really very passive for you? Which, what do you think? I think it goes, well, honestly, it really develops, uh, sorry, depends on the content uh, a ton. I mean, if you have someone who's doing a show and tell, you know, they're like saying, Hey, I'm going to show you on the screen how to use something or do something, ABC, whatever you definitely need to, well, I want to watch that. Um, but here's why audio matters so much, because if you have cruddy audio, uh, nobody's going to do anything with your broadcast. Cause there's like, I can't, what, I can't hear you. There's an echo or there's static, ugh, you know, cause we're, we're also trained to really care about the quality, um, particularly in this season of podcasts. But I, I see so many people who say, you know, I usually will put a live stream up in the background and I'll listen to it. Cause that matters. I and mean, you have it open. That counts as a view that counts as a, a substantial view by Facebook. And you know, that's an over 10 seconds because you have the screen up and you're listening. Um, but I, I, I do that sometimes too, because you know, you've got to get work done. I mean, we're all in that, you know, multitasking phase of our lives and society and stuff where you're trying to get it all done. Um, but you can still count that you're like, Hey, I'm there. And plus then you, you know, you hear something, if they're saying something, Oh my God, Oh yes. And you want to hop over, just pull the screen up and then you can interact. Um, but well, yeah, when you do have it not on screen and you're just listening, you're also not seeing the comments. So you're, you are missing a whole component there. So I, I'll tell you guys, I mean, to be fully transparent, it's hard. It's really hard to make time to go when you're produce, product, particularly when you're creating live streams, to yeah. go make time to go be in live streams, to go watch the live streams. But it's so relevant to do that because you do, that community is real. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's a struggle I have all the time to really try. I got to go in. I got to go watch Jonathan's show. And Jonathan, I'm sorry, I should be watching your show more. Um, every yes, all every, all the time, every, on, every Friday. On loops even. I, I should, I should just have it. Um, but yeah, it's it's something we should all commit to try to do because how do we get better, you know? And how do we learn? We 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 watch and we listen and we we participate in these in these live streams. So I'm I'm reading through some of the well, question two is getting ready to to pop out if it hasn't already. I'm reading through. I've seen some of the the, the tweets and some of the Facebook comments and things like this. And I think the vast majority, at least the audience that are watching live, they really do put participation as that's the number one thing. They're not passive listeners; they're actually very active listeners. And I think I, I do know that the, that from just looking at data in a larger sense that we see that more people, um, if they're not interested, they don't passively listen. They just pass by, they just mm -hmm. go on They're They're not sitting there going, I'm just going to listen to the background. Now I'm lucky in terms of like, I know some of, some of the people that, that watch my, my own personal show, they, mm -hmm. they'll do that. But I've, I've also kind of put the show in a way together that, 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 that that's, that's one of the options. Like, you know, I've even told them, Hey guys, thanks for, you know, thanks for, uh, for listening, you know, in the background. Cause I know people I've it's towards business people and it's during business hours. And that's, that's one of the reasons I expect it. Yeah. What I'm seeing is a lot of these people that are watching on Twitter and paying attention on Facebook and, and, you know, Periscope, they're active in their participation. They don't sit yeah. by and just let the, let things scroll. They're either really involved or they pass it. Yeah. No, yeah, it's like all in or now I'm walking away from mm -hmm. the pool pretty much. <laughs> right. Right. Well, hey, we've got question two up and I think we've already got some answers mm -hmm. kind of rolling in here. Um, yes, question number two is, do you prefer to broadcast to one destination or to many? Oh. And I'm talking about at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of different tech and different ways to do it. But 
Rachel, what's how do you like to broadcast? Do you is it really one to one, or do you like to actually go to several, four or five, whatever? many different ones i so as you know uh history of this particular broadcast we're on right now uh had been uh just a spread <laughs> we were kind of like you know uh facebook periscope plus there's twitter um and i will say i've gravitated more toward one maybe two and that's it and the whole reason uh, is, and I've referred to this before, what I call the crazy eye syndrome. We're just like, yeah, I'm a, I'm looking in the camera, but then I'm on Twitter and then I'm on Periscope and then I'm on Facebook. And, you know, you're hardly ever participating, focused, you know, having focused participation. It's really hard to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even right now, you know, I'm talking to you, but I'm also kind of trying to pull up the Facebook feed so I can also look at those comments and, and comment mm -hmm. there. Um, I have gravitated toward doing one most of the time, maybe two. I'm going to be starting actually a little you know, just dropping this news. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new broadcast on, I believe I'm going to do it Thursday mornings early called really social shorts. Uh, shorts, actually wearing of shorts has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that it's really short, <laughs> um, short broadcast, but my plan is to do it to YouTube and Periscope. I will be using, um, joycaster slash slash, uh, switchers or uh, sorry, switchboard. Um, to do that because I looks like I can bring the I think I can bring and you guys can actually help me with this I, I think I can bring all the comments into one place mm -hmm. um, but that's the whole key I don't want to miss comments and you guys I've even seen this if you you can raise your hand or shout out if you've seen this on Facebook where you have the live stream hosted from one property on Facebook but then people share it out well the only comments the host can see if they're using a tool like be live or something are the ones on the original post they can't see when I share it to my timeline and people comment on that post, they can't see those. So hmm. the comments matter. Uh, I, I do feel like the ones that actually pay attention to the comments and can look at the comments, like, you know, you guys do a great job here trying to look at those on Periscope and Twitter and Facebook to say, yeah, we want to absorb all of that. Um, it's a heavy lift. And if you're a solo producer, uh, it makes more sense, I think, to try it to just one. I get that you get more eyes and exposure and stuff when you go to and spread to multiple platforms, but you also run the risk of missing out on the participation. Um, and so I, it just depends on what you feel comfortable with doing. Some people aren't going to care about the comments. They're just going to blast out that content and go follow up with the comments later. Okay. Um, but I think if you care about that community and, and the live interaction that they're doing where they're typing while you're talking, uh, mm -hmm. less is more. So them's my, them's my thoughts on that well, one. And, you know, I think that that really that goes actually with um, with a with a question that we're that's going to be a little bit later on um, in the broadcast. But we'll, when we talk about production and things like this, but, you know, because there's the technical aspect of like you were saying, mm -hmm. it's just getting it's not just the content creation. It's the tech side of actually getting it out. It's like tweeting and, you know, and live streaming, you know, being yeah. able to see sometimes. I mean, you do need to look at the camera. But then, you know, there's times where you're trying to not look right at the camera, even on your phone, where you're looking down to see the comments. Yeah. You know, yep. and, and so how do you do that? And sometimes, I mean, yeah, there's some tricks and things like that and little ways that we kind of get around it. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I think, I think if you are, are, if you have captured the attention of your audience, when you are checking different feeds, as long as you, you do it very consistently. Yeah. I think you can do it, but it, yeah, it. You bring up a really good point of engage at least on one all the time in terms yeah. of someone, someone posts, you click it. Like you let them know, Hey, Terry, I saw that you, you tweeted, you know, Doug, I saw that you're there. Alfredo, thank you for joining us today. You know? Um, and I see Rachel. Now I do see you on Facebook, you know, yes, that's right. that you do take the time to go in. Yeah. I wouldn't say start out with everything. Don't start out trying to go to like eight platforms. It's just not going to work. No, no. Well, and, and think about that. I mean, you know, it is all social media still. This is all happening on social media and all the platforms are different. You know, their uh, Periscope's vastly different. I, Doug is is in the uh, conversation today. He's blogged about this at least once about what why Periscope's different than Facebook. Um, and, you ha and YouTube is different than both. Um, Twitch totally different. You know, you've got a totally different subset of audiences on each one. And so you have to pay attention to that. Um, one thing I was going to say too, in talking about tricks and ways to like, look at the camera, but also see the comments, you can actually incorporate time for that into the broadcast. Say, 
I'm going to go look right now at the comments and just, and start reading those. There's nothing wrong with audibly saying that. And you know, uh, be like, okay, let's make sure we're pay paying attention to the comments. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a real thing. Um, that's, it's almost, again, like you're sitting, having coffee, you and I are having, I'm having my vanilla chai, but like, oh, I need a napkin. Let me go get that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that real life, that real, uh, person kind of, um, mm -hmm. interaction. So I, I think there's, there's ways to do it. Um, but yeah, if you go try to do five platform, I don't even know if there are five platforms to do, I oh, guess yeah. you can, sure. but, uh, if you try to do five, it's kind of biting off a little more than you should, I think. So right we, when we had that expectation of 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 a conversation going back and forth, I think it is. I think it's too many to really. And you can broadcast to hundreds. Yeah, it's, that's not the issue. No. The issue is what it, now that you're there, what are you going to do with it? I think that's the better question in the end. But there are some people, and you know, Archon Archon Mounts, who's you know a friend of both of us, that you mm -hmm. know um, they they make tools to specifically enable you. Yeah, to be able to do that multicasting, and thank you, Terry Terry Johnson. She she just tweeted that as a as she's you know that was her word. You know the multicasting. I like it. You know, but it's very true. When you know if you set it up right, that it's all within your eye shot. Now you're able to participate in the conversation with the audience as as the creator pushing it out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. And and again, I mean, everybody. I feel like you probably could multicast. It's a great word. Um, but you need to have the support for it. You know, you need to have moderators then have people there who could be on each platform and say, well, I got, I got Periscope, I got Twitch, I got Buff Busker, I got everything whenever, you know, so they can man it. At least there's somebody there. Cause as, as, uh, when we have some resident Periscope, uh, faves here in the, in today's conversation too, Periscope's kind of rife with trolls. Sometimes you need to be able to take care of that. You know, let's protect the community and the discussion, the dialogue happening and not let it get usurped by questionable people. So got to be able to do that. So question number three, and by the way, today's questions, they're not a flow. I just was kind of asking a good handful of questions mm -hmm. in, in the mix of it. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we kind of touched on a lot of the issues and the topics that I think kind of surround this idea. Um, but question number three, which is, you know, which is more important in live streaming entertainment mm. Or education. <laughs> I'm really asking that to to you as the audience. What's more important to you? Is it more important to be entertained, or is it more important to get like informational, good education, good solid, like whatever you know, whatever it is that you want to do? I better be seeing the uh, the uh, gladiator gif. Are you not entertained? I want to see it. Someone put it up on Twitter. Come on, you know you. I I, I got I got messy tacos earlier. I want I want a gladiator gif right now. Let's go. Um, so if I may, uh, I think it really depends on what, what is, what's the broadcast about. Um, the content can be riveting uh, and it can be dirgeful. I mean, it could be a very serious live stream with some really epic content. Um, but that, you know, the broadcaster knows the audience shows up for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's that, and you don't, you may have zero entertainment in there, but man, that con Oh, you know, it's edgy. It's edgy. I'm learning stuff. This is stuff I did not know, you know, then you got on the flip side, the full on entertainment, people are being goofy or they're singing. Busker has tons of those Twitch, you know, they're gaming and whatever. And you're there. Cause I'm just getting entertained. I'm just here to, you know, let my brain cells relax and just watch and be entertained. Uh, and then you get all the shades of gray between. So, and no, I didn't read 50 shades of gray. I'm probably never going to read that. I don't consider that edu educational or entertaining. So there's that. And that brings up another one. Some people just will care about neither and find another live stream. So, uh, I don't know. I, I like, um, I like a mix of both. I, I like being educated while laughing. I think that's one of the best ways to get into people's brains. Mm -hmm. Um, when you can, you know, have them evoke while they're, you're trying to insert that stuff. Uh, that's why I like comedy a lot. Uh, and I like, you know, crying movies too. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what everybody else thinks. I would love to hear. What, and what do you think, Jonathan? Are you like a, you know, this, this, or from here? I'm going to say like this, even in education, I think that more and more it's important to bring it in a, I, I, if I, man, it's going to sound awful, but it, I want it, I want my education in a, in an entertaining fashion. Like, and it yeah. doesn't always necessarily have to be funny, but I want it to be well presented. Yeah. You know, ed ed entertainment is not always, you know, um, you know, humor. 
Entertainment mm -hmm. is something that's captivating. I've watched many documentaries that are very entertaining, but very serious. Yeah. And I, and I'm, you know, kind of that's, I see a, a good handful of people, you know, in the Twitter chat, you know, Alfredo saying this is, yeah, he, by the way, Alfredo did get your, uh, are you not entertained gift? <gasps> oh, I gotta go look. Yeah. But Alfredo says, he says education is more important to him. You know, Terry yeah. Johnson says education is, you know, but she says she likes it with a touch of entertainment. I think that uh, to me, education is, is very important. Like I want to know stuff. Like I want to learn things, mm -hmm. but just do a really good job and make it entertaining. And yeah. you know, I'm going to watch and I'm going to come back, you know? Yeah. I know, that's just me. No, I, I, and that's legit. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't judge that. I mean, I do. I think particularly, I mean, I just totally a little bit related to the topic today, but I just put, I put my two kids in school today for anyone who saw my Facebook post last night. Uh, we totally forgot to register our kids for school. Awesome parents right here. Nice. Um, nice. but, uh, we forgot we were like at dinner last night. We took the kids out for like a special dinner last, you know, dinner of the summer of their freedom. And we're like, we didn't register. <gasps> so we were fine, but they're going to be sitting in a classroom for, you know, or classrooms for hours on a day. Uh, I'm pretty sure those, those uh, teachers are trying to figure out different ways to say, here are ways we can make this a little more interesting for you. Oh. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, I, I think, think teachers do that so that they're not so bored teaching the same thing again. Oh my God. Right. You know, know. what I mean? Like yeah. I'd be doing it all. I'd be like, I, no, we're doing a totally different curriculum this year. Right. I need the break. Well, they have a, uh, I, I really, I actually emailed our teachers last year about it. Cause my son, he just, he, he is hoping for the day when someone tells him you don't have to go to school ever again. I'm like, well, that's a ways away. Uh, but I actually emailed them. They have a curriculum out there where my, they, you can use Minecraft to teach the curriculum. And I'm like, let's do that. Let's do that. Because my kids are all in on Minecraft. And that's entertaining to them, but it's also them figuring things out and they are using their little brains to do things in there. Well, why not? Can we translate some of this stuff through Minecraft into what they need to learn? Uh, and just like you said, nothing wrong with that, where it's like, this is how it's going to get in my brain. You just found me on a common ground of something I enjoy doing. And, but this is going to be useful to me. Nothing wrong with, with finding that answer. So I I'm all about the ones that mix it really well, where there's entertainment. And again, everybody's got their level of what, how they want to be entertained. Some people really like Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I enjoy his movies. Some people are a little more light and they like Ellen or some people like soap operas. I hate those. Um, so I would never want to watch a live stream that acts like a soap opera. Cause I'm like, Oh my God. But I'd watch something that was like Ellen. I might mm -hmm. watch something like Quentin Tarantino, but I'm weird. Um, not that I want people doing things like Quentin Tarantino would do in movies on their live streams. Cause that's probably wrong. Uh, but you know, there's, everybody's got their, how they want to dial it in. I, and I think you hit, hit it right on the head with that when it comes to like, I mean, everybody is going to be looking for their specific thing that connects with them. Yeah. And that's what makes social and, you know, to, to use a term social streaming, I think that's what makes it very, you, you know, it, it connects me with my content. Like I, I, I mean, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of minutes of video just going out all the time, but yeah. I, one, I can't physically watch it. And two, I don't want to watch it all. Right. Right. Well, that's, and that's a lot of, a lot of eyeballs you got to vie for, you know, you got to try. And so, uh, it's just, you talked about it being quality and, you know, having, seeing a quality content. Uh, I think that's what we're going for too. I think if you have quality and good content, you will have an audience somewhere. Um, you know, Chocolate Johnny said that too. You have a story to tell, um, but you're vying against other people for that attention. So make, make it good, you know, make it like let's, let's live stream because you guys make it good. Awesome. Well, you know, and well, so there's two things and we're going to bring up and I just want to do a reminder for those people that have been watching us so far. If you're on Twitter and you retweet, you know, not retweet, if you reply to the, to the tweet where I ask, Everybody, if you reply to the treat, tweet, yeah, I cannot say it today. <laughs> you reply to the tweet with your show link. I'll retweet it today from Let's Live Stream and, oh, and from my personal account. That's very um, nice of you. I want to give people a chance to be mm -hmm. able to, to share their show. Sometimes their content, if they have great content, they just can't get it in front of the right people's eyes. Yeah. Yep. It no. can be that one, I, you can get that one person who watches and they start sharing with their community and now, whoo hoo got a whole new community so you could just it's the power of one literally yeah, and it so starts today with you that. are the one you're the one today 
you're the one. You're the one. To share my show. Yes, you are. It's amazing. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, guys, I do want to tell you um, this production, the whole thing is put on by Vitmug. Um, it is something that we do uh, every week uh, just for this production, for Let's Livestream. But it also... Uh, it's also a service that you guys can ask for and use, um, you know, to produce your own show, um, whether it's a virtual conference, whether it's interviews, podcast style, whatever, reach out to us. You can go over to Vitmug on Twitter, or you can go over to vitmug.com um, and look around, see. And if it's something that you're interested in, I would dare you reach out to us and let us know how we can help you get your show out there. So. Having said that, question number four is actually also coming up very quickly. And I think it's a really important question mm -hmm. that we have talked about before. Just, I think you, you and I, Rachel, we've talked about this. We before. did. We talked about this one. Oh, before. yes. Because oh. not just this question number four, yeah. okay, it's, not just, it's not just the straight out, how important is production to a broadcast? But I want to get everybody's opinion on the implications of this. Mm. High, you know, high level prod, uh, you know, production, and I have my own personal opinions. Or is it just really a just a straight get by, just just as raw and as real as you can be, with no fluff, no, it just wants straight video. Where do you where do you sit? Where do you what do you think about this, Rach? Uh, well, and, and I don't know if it tweeted out yet too, but I'll reply in there when when I when I get done talking, I'll I'll do the twitters. Um, but um, I think it is important. Here's the thing: you can do it you can do it fairly easily through some practice. Um, uh, I know, you know, I, I, I'm going to use Jeff Adams as an example. I've seen his pictures of his studio, which is like a room of the size I'm sitting in right now, which is not that big, but it's just wall to wall equipment. Uh, I have zero budget for that kind of thing. I don't, um, I am, I am, uh, the studio on the budget person. Um, so you can do it though on a budget. I mean, this microphone, uh, is, I think it's, it's an ATR uh, 2100. It's 70 bucks right about now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I use a Logitech webcam, which I got Amazon did a sale. And then I think it got it, uh, for, it was under hundred dollars. It was really good. Um, but I wasn't using that forever. I was just using my laptop webcam. So not the best video, uh, but again, audio, remember what we said about audio, audio matters because if someone's putting this up in the background and they're doing work, but they're listening, um, being able to hear you matters. Uh, they will forgive a ton with video if they could still hear you. Uh, and then it's just knowing what you're talking about. If you legit are going to do a live stream where I'm going to show you me eating messy tacos every day. I don't know why I'm hovering on the messy tacos. I think I'm hungry. Um, then you better have something else to say. What are you talking about? Because guess what? If you show me you eating that every day, I don't care. I'm going to stop caring quickly. Um, so you need to put some thought into that um, as well as far as providing that quality content and just making sure people can either can definitely hear you, preferably see you, uh, and that you also have the strong signal. Uh, I know we've all run across all the time. Uh, live streams where we're trying to go live and we have a crappy signal, <laughs> which brings everything to a screeching halt. Don't bother then, you know? So, but we have all these tools. Um, we have it when, if you buy a smartphone, you've got everything you need. Cause guess what? Your little smartphone always comes with the, that earbud, uh, you know, with microphone that people are making money uh, with advertisers cause they're creating live streams with this and their microphone and that's it. So we're all, I mean, Vitmug makes really high caliber quality productions and there is value to that because there are people who really want that. But you also have the people who are able to just do a kick-ass live stream show with their phone in a Wi-Fi uh, sector mm -hmm. with their earbuds. So it matters though. I mean, it really does to just keep, check those things off the basics list where mm -hmm. you're like, I've got everything I do need, just at least get this message out. Because what if you do, you have some, some great thing you wanna cover and you don't have Vitmug or you don't have multiple laptops or anything or, you know, the Archon amount with all the things and you just, but you know, you need to get that content out. Right. Um, some of the best live streams of, let's just go back to Miss uh, Chewbacca, Chewbacca Mom, still the highest viewed uh, live stream on Facebook and she was using her phone and no microphone. And, so. and I think you, I think you're, you're absolutely right on with it when when you're talking about, look, I, I think it comes down to where, where are you reaching? What, where are you reaching your audience? And what's the message that you're trying to share out? 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if what if what you're trying to do is just share that really intimate, personal, I, I don't think a lot of I don't think a lot of production, you know, backgrounds and switches and right. this and that. Green honestly, screen. give me that, give me that feel in yeah. the production, in the in the actual video part of it. That I I make it make it feel like it's just you and me when you're talking to me. You know, mm-hmm. and Rachel, you've kind of done a, a few of these like spoof, um, you know, parody. Uh, style uh, videos where it <laughs> feels like, you know, and I haven't, I don't have them queued up just so you know, it's not, that's not a setup, but um, you've done a number of these where, you know, you, you're watching it and it's actually really funny because <laughs> I really feel like you're talking just to me or that I'm really listening in on a very small mm-hmm. conversation. Like I'm really part of like a very small. And, and, and I think that that says something about mm-hmm. that one-to-one connection, that live stream, but I don't think that that would be a very good presentation for um, like a webinar or something like that, or like a very, like a public um, Adobe does uh, live tutorials on how to use their software. Mm -hmm. I don't, that, that's not a good use of that perspective. Right. Um, um, so I think there is a little bit of both, but I, I agree. And I, I like it. Like I've seen NPR, they use Snapchat a ton and, and it's not technically live streaming, but uh, I like what I see with that, what they do, because you do get that inside look into what you know is a highly re- reputable company, but you're getting a little more humanity. So as you just pointed out, it really matters what the intent is. If I'm, if I'm going to watch Adobe put out, you know, a how-to video on how to use one of their software features, I'm going to expect a high level of production simply because they use high quality tools. I mean, I should be seeing those in action to do that, but an NPR probably has the same thing, but if, it, if the whole point is that they're showing me the insights of their, of their staff and, and just real moments in the office, that should be a little more off the cuff. I mean, I should get, you know, it shouldn't be like Blair Witch Project where it's like a, you know, handheld right. cam all the time necessarily, but it should be a little more, feel a little more authentic, organic, like I'm standing in the room, right? right. So like you said, it, it really matters. I think, I guess the answer to this question is it's important to your audience. Uh, the mm-hmm. production is important to your audience and whoever they are and whatever this is, that will t- tell you what pr- what production value you should be incorporating, right. I guess. And I, I just saw on this, and I'm really glad that that Doug with Frameable Faces put this up and they said, um, they're talking about their morning show and, you know, in the comment is look too much production for their morning show would actually, it would detract even because yeah. it's very personality based. It's very, mm-hmm. we want that, you know, they're looking for that off the cuff, that, that very, look, I'm inviting you into that behind the scenes, yeah. you know, as opposed to, you know, let's live stream. I mean, this is a, this is a produced content, but we do that so that we can bring in a lot of different elements, you know, where yeah. we've got you know, different cards, we've got different, you know, you and I are, are not even, I mean, we're like time zones apart. Right. You know, uh, we've got rolling, uh, uh, you know, tweets that are going out live on the show, and we put it together that way for for this production. But if I was to do a different show, my my personal show, I do it completely different than this mm-hmm. because it's audience mm-hmm. expecting something. Yeah, so exactly. It's all being fair to your audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys, you're the boss of us. You're the boss, Applesauce. Tell you're us what you boss. want, and we I will let you. That. I do want to say hi to everybody that's watching us on Facebook and Periscope. Guys, I really appreciate it. I love it. If you haven't already, make sure you do share it out. Um, and if you are tweeting about this, um, I do want to let you know that every week now we're doing a Storify and it's your chance to be part of our Storify story where we make, they make the web tell a story. I think that's a real, I like that, that little tagline make the web tell a story. So we'll be doing that and, and putting that out. And if you guys haven't already, you guys can, um, you know, obviously just go over to storify.com and then it's forward slash let's live stream to catch um, all of the stories we've done. And it's kind of fun. I'll be honest. It is with cool. You. I like it. It's a good recap and it's visual. So that, that makes it really cool. It's so easy to use Rachel. It's so it easy it to really use. is a drag and drop and you can put it. I mean, I, th- I was really prepared for like a long time. No, this is so easy. This is the way that I do it now. Um, I will say when I learned about it, I want to give a shout out to Christy Gillentine of the, the chat snap, um, huge, uh, uh, Twitter chat that she does, uh, right before this one, uh, which inspired this one, frankly, I was like, shoot, she's, she's not like, you know, and she wasn't live streaming at the time. She's like, she's just doing, um, a chat about Snapchat, not on Snapchat, then I can do a live stream one on Twitter. Um, but, uh, and here we are. But she's the one who was like, yeah, you store fine. It's totally easy. I'm like, really? And I tried, I'm like, it is easy. Scott, I love it when that happens. And it's easy for, because um, we broadcast in, in a couple locations. I can pull 
your Facebook comments as well as your tweets. So it's not just one or the other. And one day when we get YouTube all up and functioning, um, we'll pull we'll pull YouTube into it as well. So uh, you know the whole point really is, guys, is that um, the more you participate, the more I get to share your stuff out, and I, that's kind of that's one of the things of it. I like this next question, Jonathan. There's we are point. on the next question. All right, everybody, you guys ready for this? I've got it already queued up. Okay, so the question really is: Does a monetized broadcast change the way you watch a live mm. stream event? Mm. Boy, I, I don't think a lot of people have really thought about it because we've really just dealt with live streaming as a, look, yeah. I've just got my phone and I'm just going to broadcast it out. And we haven't, we're just now really starting to get uh, to ask this question in on a personal level, not a YouTube throws ads in there or Facebook, you know, right. does something. But wh what about you? Do, when you see a monetized, monetized broadcast, does that change the way you view it? Um, it does. And I'll use a couple of examples. Uh, one of them, again, I'm going to yell at Doug. I'm not yelling at you, Doug. I'm actually talking about you. But um, so Doug and Allie do their morning frameable faces show on Periscope. Um, and they've always just done it on Periscope. Um, and then Periscope recently, eh, about two, three months ago, I guess now, actually, God, time flies, uh, rolled out the whole super hearts thing. Uh, where you can basically go buy um, some hearts and then you can then you can set your, you know, how, you know, you guys are doing it right now. You're giving hearts to the Periscope right now. Um, but in, you can set it to say, well, instead of a regular heart, I want to give Doug and Allie a super heart. So you're putting some money behind that right now. Once, uh, just a little education, we're talking about education and entertainment. Ha ha. Uh, I don't even need a taco to tell you about this. So once you hit a certain number of super hearts you have been given as a periscoper, you can then apply to be a, a, a super periscope producer, I believe a super producer. Um, and then that will give you money from periscope. You can actually monetize. So Doug and Allie, if they are given more super hearts that can get them to the point where they aren't just doing this for fun or for business. They actually can make money directly for periscope. Now, the reason I bring that up, I love their broadcast. I love what they do with it. I love that they engage. I love that they, Oh, oh, oh you just hit that morning. They just said on periscope. They just hit that this morning. Nice. So that's exciting for me to hear because when I watch their Periscope, I love what they do. And so I want to kind of put my money where my mouth is. I, I could sit there and just give them regular hearts all day. But if I'm able to, and I'm like, God, I really want them to keep doing this. So I'm going to give them the super heart. And I have given them super hearts. So I've got, I had a little drop in your bucket, guys. I'm so excited for you. So now they can go on to monetize as they should, because they are a consistent content creator of good stuff on there. And then the other one I was going to bring up was Joe Wilson TV. Um, and so he's someone who used to be on Periscope and now he does at least, I think he does two live streams per week, one of which is song request cage match. And he's taken that to busker and now he's able to get tips, um, from people on busker when he's just nailing it. Uh, so I, I guess from my standpoint, I like the fact that I could go and watch a broadcast that I appreciate the people doing it. I, I like what they do. They're consistent. They're true to it. They have developed a community and they care about it. Um, I want to be able to reward them. So it does, it has changed the way I approach both Doug and Allie, as well as uh, Joe Wilson, that I'm able to put my money where my mouth is and say, yes, I believe in you guys so much that I want to give you stuff. Um, so I don't know. That's, that's one take on it. Uh, I am sure there are multiple other takes on it, um, but that's just mine. So I, it has changed it for the better. I hope. Yeah. I, you, when you when you're adding that monetized part, and I think I think with, when it comes to Periscope, that's actually a very passive way in a in a good way. Meaning, like it doesn't it doesn't obstruct the the viewing. It's not like um, you know they they're not throwing up ads right in the middle of your show as you're kind of going through your your viewing like you do on YouTube. You know, you mm -hmm. can go along, all of a sudden. It's like, geez, I got, I got to wait for 15 or whatever. It's one of those unskippable ads or whatever. Right. And and that's just the monetizing. That that's how they choose to do it on that. On that platform, that's fine. That that is not the issue. I don't think that's the discussion here. It's the question is, when you know that something's monetized, mm -hmm. does that actually change the way that that you that you watch it? I mean, like you know, if we threw up ads in all over this, and you know, and and would that detract from it? Or even if right. it was really well incorporated, 
um, you know, into it where the graphics match and everything's like this, does that actually change the way that you're going to look at and right. view shows? You can be like, uh, guess what? Mm-hmm. It's just another monetized, like some of that was just another ad and I'm, I'm tired of it. Like I don't, yeah. if I wanted ads, I'd just go watch TV. I, uh, to, to your point. So I, I, I can monetize them at the point where I can monetize my YouTube videos. And so I do a ton of how to videos on my social, on my YouTube channel. It's a, uh, it's bit.ly slash how to social videos. That's how you get to it. But I have monetized some, but I refuse. And you guys, if you see these on my videos, tell me because I hate them. YouTube gives you a few options for where ads can appear on your videos. I always uncheck the ones. I hate those ones that appear across the bottom because to me, that's like, well, way to obscure what I'm showing. I don't want that. I, the whole point of this video is to show people how to do stuff. And if the ad is obscuring the content, then no, I don't want it on there. So um, that's one choice I've made um, because I, I, it is really annoying when you're just trying to see the content and, oh, here's an ad. Well, I, I can't see around that now, except I got to go click on it. It's very annoying for a user. So mm-hmm. um, that's something to keep in, in mind too, um, that you, you know, if you do let, let the, if you have control, that is like YouTube does give you over monetizing and placement of ads, keep that in mind. I mean, you might be like, yeah, I'm going to make money. Well, not if people can't tell what you're doing. If it's really right. contingent on them seeing something, then no, that's not going to work for you. No, I, th- I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting part. We've seen it for years on radio and podcast where they're going right in through the, you mm-hmm. know, it's a really great question, a great conversation and things. And then they say, and then today's show has been brought to you by, you know, roofers are great.com. <laughs> and I'm sorry for roofers you know, are great.com, but you know, it's something that actually has nothing to do with our show, but it's just a show sponsor. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we, we have like spotlights, you know, that we put like today's, uh, today's spotlight is Storify. You yeah. Know? Uh, you know, it was just, that was just the spotlight. I mean, we have other tech partners that, that I'm not par- partners, but you know, they're, these are, these are the, the technologies of power the show. And we like to highlight them because we love what they do. There it is. You know, we see switchboard, we see, uh, you know, wirecast anchor li- uh, live leap. You know, these are all part of what mm-hmm. make the show great. And we try to do it in a way one, because we actually use it that I can say anchor is really great products. Yeah, you know, I've always said this. I, I'm like, I have probably almost a half a dozen right here on my desk that I use almost every day. And I can say it because I do. It's not like, hey, Rachel, if you would just use my affiliate link, <laughs> hey. I've gotten some kind of, you know, they've sent me something for, no, we don't, I don't do that. And, and that was my point. It's like, does that kind of stuff detract? And I think to some people, it really does. It matters. They just want, mm-hmm. they want it unbiased. They want it. Give me the straight talk. Well, though I, I, the way you said that, though, you could make something and be like, hey, hey, why don't you go ahead and use my affiliate link? That's a little bit, hey. So I think that would be entertaining at the very least. You know, <laughs> videos to come. <laughs> videos to come. No, we can I'll, only help. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the voiceover work all myself, too. <laughs> Good. Please do. Please do it. Please do it. <laughs> All guys, I'm loving everything you guys are putting out there, uh, especially on Twitter. You guys are you guys are killing it. I on love fire. it. They're on fire. And I see a couple of you guys now watching over on Facebook. I appreciate it. Um, I know we are he- we're we're almost. You know, we only have six questions. I don't know, Rachel, if I had told you that we only have six questions. I like doing it That's this amazing. way. I do too. A little bit more time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, think back to the days when, uh, God, we had Brian Fanzo on this show and, uh, Jen's probably going, Oh my God. Cause that man, he's got a ton of knowledge up here and he's got a ton of words to say about it. And I think we, we barely, it was basically like, okay, you're done. Here's a question. Go. And we just had to let him kind of roll. So I think six really does, uh, allow for some more, uh, dialogue. Yeah. I, I, I like it. So, Hey, um, let's bring up question number six. Cause I think it is live on Twitter. Uh, question six, and I am posting, by the way, I'm posting these both in the group, um, you know, in the, uh, in the live, uh, the Facebook side and on the Periscope side, um, <laughs> just to make sure you guys are all catching it. Doug is saying in Periscope, if you monetize, you could afford more than six questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So please send us money, Doug. This yeah, is an so easy solve. There it is. Uh, that's, that's your, Doug, that's your personal CTA. Money right where there. your mouth is, Doug. But for everybody, and I saved this question for last because um, because I think the other questions were a lot better. But I saved this this question, this last one. It's really mainly for for you creators that are out there. 
Um, and I want to ask, like, how do you promote your broadcast? Because there's tons mm. of different ways. And not that you have to give all of your secrets out, but would you guys just share something? What's, what's one way that you guys share it out? And just don't say, I tweet it. But how <laughs> do you guys share it out? Do you make special content? Do you, do you, take, do you make special videos? I mean, like, like, do you email your list? Like, what do you guys do, mm. do to, to, to promote your live streaming broadcast? Uh, that's a really good, uh, question. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of different options too, which, uh, hopefully again, with the educational standpoint, some of us are gonna be like, oh my God, I never would have thought of that. Um, I, I gotta tell you one thing I've really been digging that I've been seeing lately are, are the Facebook chat bots. Now, obviously this relates a ton to if you're live streaming on Facebook versus uh, another platform that said, um, I really like how if you have a page and this has to be through a page, I don't think, at least I haven't seen it. I'm sure maybe there's a way I haven't seen any chat bots in action on a personal profile or even a group. Okay. But, um, chat bots, I mean, if you have people uh, type in a specific word on your Facebook page and a comment or whatever, uh, that can kick off, uh, them getting a private message from your page saying, Hey, you, we noticed you might be interested in this topic. Well, guess what? We have a live stream show about this and we'd love you to be in it. Now, that live stream show could happen on the page. It could happen on your profile. It could happen in a group, uh, which again brings me to talk about your Facebook groups are awesome. Um, you talk about just the targeted component of it where you can make a group on any topic that is very segmented. It's very narrow. Uh, and that's a great place. Um, just like you guys do with Live Talk Nation um, that you're able to say, hey, here's a broadcast about live streaming, live talking, um, and you guys should be part of it. And you really develop that, let that community grow in that, in that capacity, in that place that they, they don't have to wait for the broadcast. They don't have to wait for the show. They can talk without the show. I'm doing that too with another live stream I'm starting where I've got a group developing for it. The group is including people who not only could be interested in watching the show, but also be guests on the show or care about the topics we cover on the show. So um, I think, I think you really, you, you, you have to create a community outside of the actual show mm -hmm. where they can, uh, they can all flock. Um, so, and, and I love what Doug is bringing up too. And I think web, web girl, uh, Terry is doing this too, emailing your newsletter. Absolutely. Um, if you have those emails, that's golden. I mean, those are ways for people to stay in touch. Uh, you can mm -hmm. text people. So yeah, a bunch of different options based on what your audience is doing. Mm. I, I, I was keeping a, I was, um, trying to keep up to up on what people were putting out there and just to throw uh, different ideas out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some, they, they actually make stories, you know, they, they're telling stories yeah. as either a lead up or as, um, as a uh, frameable faces, they repurpose the content. They, they refashion it after mm -hmm. to promote the content. Um, you know, some are using anchor. So they're using podcast style, you know, they're using Twitters and emails and, yeah. and I really like a lot of what everybody is doing that it's one I think it really just demonstrates it's not, it, there isn't just one way to do it. It's not three right. ways. <laughs> you don't do these three tasks. ways, you're not going to be promoted. Right. Sucks for you. Two easy <laughs> steps. Yeah. You know? and, and because it's, I mean, sure, there are some, there are some best practices and things. And that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to ask this because I think, you know, in, the, in this case, we're, we're all trying something different. I mean, some people are trying some things. I mean, email lists have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. People are still yeah. using it and it still works and we know yeah. it and we're yeah. going to continue to use it until it stops. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think there's just so many options and, uh, I love Terry. I'm going to have to talk to you more about anchor. I've never used it before. Um, I'm actually keen to start doing more too with Facebook live audio Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's, you know, the Facebook option for, you know, if you just want to do voice only, plus you don't have to be camera ready for that one. Awesome. I think it's great. And it's great. Um, yeah, I mean, I could be, you know, lay in bed, be like today on today's broadcast, you will see this. Um, yeah. uh, she said she did a show yesterday. Uh, Terry share that link. He said, he's going to retweet people's links out. So make sure you share your anchor link. Um, uh, yes. Uh, on Twitter too. He's going to tweet them out. So do that. Yep. Um, I facts. Do it live, <laughs> Doug saying. Doug, uh, or actually, actually, Adam tech, sorry, Doug, I almost blame you for this. Uh, Adam, I'm actually going to shoot that one down. Adam said that you should fax people about your broadcast. Ooh, oh, yeah. 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 You fax it. You fax it. Direct mail. Everybody. Yeah. I think direct mail pieces. All four good. of them. Way to go. Way mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. yeah. QR codes. 
So I, I think you're, I think you guys actually kind of get a lot of those ideas in terms of, you know, it's not just one, but there's a lot of emerging tech that's coming out. I am really interested in chat bots, but I'm afraid that, that they're too spammy. That's honestly, that's my, that is my biggest fear with chat bots. <laughs> now we've got, they're all talking about send a raven, send a pigeon, <laughs> uh, smoke Ponies. signals. Yeah. Unicorns. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I mean, you could do all manner of things. I think that's what the uh, the cool stuff is, is to come up with those innovative ways to do it. Um, and I, there's just a ton of, there are a ton of options, digital and otherwise out there to do it. But uh, I mean, the, the whole point is, I think you got to make it to where I can use this to see it. Mm -hmm. um, so if I can use this to, hey, tap, I'm in the broadcast. That's the ultimate thing. Develop an app. Go for it. That's um, awesome. Yeah, but all kinds of things and let people see your broadcast. And don't forget, tweet it into Let's Livestream because Jonathan said he's going to retweet that out for you. Right. And that's where we're at. So guess what? Um, I just what? put the last CTA out for Share Your Show. I, I did it at the beginning, middle, and end because I really believe it. I know if you guys have already done it, I appreciate it. But it's just in case you kind of came in maybe a little bit late. Maybe, I don't know, you had like a conference call or... You know, you just saw the tweet now and are like, holy crap, I just holy been missing Let's Live Stream. Um, no, but seriously, if you guys haven't already, make sure you do reply to one of those tweets. I put two or three out today. Just reply to it with your show link and I will uh, be able to uh, check back and retweet it because I really want to give you guys a chance to um, help put your show in front of somebody else's eyes and maybe they're really going to connect. Um, that's, that's, the right. way, that's the way you do it. It's word of, this is literally word of mouth. Twitter style. I don't know if there's probably a hashtag out there for it, but I'm sure there is. I'm, but that's okay. We don't, we, the only one that matters for today is let's live stream. That's the only one. So Rachel, in light of the fact that I know that you have podcasts and broadcasts and stuff like this, I want to give you the last word here as before we kind of hop out, what are you guys up to? If you want to share a show, if you have, you know, you talk mm. about your group or whatever you the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Um, so I will, I will make this announcement. So, uh, I had talked to you guys about this, I guess in the last couple of days. So you guys know, we have uh, a Facebook group. We have, there are actually two Facebook groups at play here. Uh, there's the live talk nation, uh, which is run by, uh, Jonathan and Jen. And it's amazing. Uh, this, this kind of the primary home for let's live stream the chat and the broadcast now. So, but then we have the let's live stream Facebook group. Um, so pretty soon, uh, I'm still there. There's a ton of stuff going on in both, which is awesome. And they're both very much focused on live streaming, which again, we all love it. Otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it. Um, so a new venture I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a course as well as an ebook. <laughs> I know it's freaking me out. I've actually got to do an ebook. I actually have to do it, but, um, I'm going to be doing one called from broadcast to podcast. Uh, and so. I'm going to be uh, introducing that a bit into the Let's Live Stream group. That one, that group's probably going to morph just a little bit, but it's going to basically kind of embrace uh, podcasting as well as broadcasting. Mostly because uh, I've seen people do it and I do it too, um, where we're live streaming and then we're also using that to turn it into, turn that content into an audio only podcast. I am a huge fan of podcasts. I love them. I now know how to do them, which is fun. Um, they're fabulous. And also just basically sweeping the whole business, et cetera, world. So that's coming down the pipe. But yeah, I got an ebook coming and I'm um, teaching a course. The first one I'm doing uh, is this October here in Denver. So I'm excited about that. And that's my business really social is really going to be drilling down and narrowing down into uh, live streaming and podcasting. So yay, I'm excited. I, I knew there was a reason I need to give you some time. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I, for I that love time. To, you know, catching up and seeing what you're up to and, you know, the things you guys, uh, you've got planned. And it really sounds like the rest of your 2017 is kind of low. Well, it's busy. Oh, well, yeah. God, right. Well, I mean, I barely, I had to miss the first part of this. I'm like, I got to get on a call really quick, but then I'm back. And mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, but you guys will always be here. This community is amazing. It's just great to be here and see everybody who's been here from the beginning or joined and, and just chatting about this thing we all love. So it's awesome. I love you guys. We love it. And Rachel, thanks for being a guest on the show today and just kind of giving you perspective. I, I know this was like, this is one of, this is one of those topics I know that you really love to talk about. I do. Well, uh, I love to talk. You could just stop the sentence there. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, Rachel, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and thanks to everybody else for showing up, watching it and tweeting and doing that, sharing your shows and things. And I will be going back after the show here. I'm going to go back in and I will do the retweets. I'm going to look you up. I will find you. We'll find you. Uh, make sure that you guys do subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, you can go over to letslivestream.com. Sign up there for the email list. We'll be sending out you guys a little bit of emails. Um, make sure you guys are tweeting out, and we'll catch you also in the Storify. Because, guys, we really just want this show to be really fun, something you guys can share out. And join us next week. Next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And I don't know all the other times, but join us next week. Um, and we will have another topic and probably more guests. So guys, until then, I'll catch you later. Take care.